Meep! I'm so excited you're here. This is the most exhausting player. People, people say Meep, Mep, what do you think? I always thought it was Mep, but it's tomato, tomato. If you T want to call it Meep, that works for me. Meep, Mep. You guys comment below. What do you call the most exhausting player? Do you call him Meep? Do you call him Mep? What we should be calling you though is Ben. Fair enough. The guy who is torturing people out there on YouTube right now. Yeah. <laughs> and so, if you don't know who this is, definitely go to Troll Tennis. Tennis Troll. Tennis Troll. Watch some of his matches, and uh, they're very entertaining to watch. I've been getting tons of views, and when I watch you play, my friend, I want no part of you. Whether I would win or lose, who knows? But I do know one thing, I'd be in bed for four days after playing you. So. It's amazing watching you play. I appreciate that, thank you. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, so tell me a little bit about, we're gonna be working on his serve today, by the way, guys. We're gonna be working on his serve. Um, but tell me a little bit about playing on the tennis troll and, and what that experience has been like for you. Uh, it's been really interesting. I, I gained way more exposure than I ever thought was, was uh, likely or possible. Uh, it's not something I sought, but uh, I've tried to embrace it and be a good sport about all the interesting comments that I get. There's a lot of people that are pretty fond of getting to see the matches, and there's a lot of people that have very strong opinions on the way that I uh, play the sport and whether I'm doing it a certain way or not. So it's it's all been very interesting and overwhelming. I've, I've not dealt with anything like this really before so. <laughs> first time well i'm glad that you keep coming i'm a big fan i'm i'm a fan of mep meep <laughs> ben i'm a fan of both of you guys and uh and uh, so if you don't know what what he's talking about he he is that player that keeps that ball going okay maybe a little unorthodox but um you have one of the greatest skills that i was actually um think way underrated that not enough people give credit to and will win so many matches so this is a great lesson to learn from watching you play is if you have the ability to absorb pace it doesn't necessarily matter how hard you're hitting the ball or what you look like. What, what is kind of like your philosophy on playing tennis? Whew. A lot of times I, I don't set out to, but I end up winning by attrition. My, my philosophy is that there, there may be people who are in, physically in better shape and there may be people who are mentally stronger, but by and large, there aren't too many opponents that I'm gonna face who are superior in both categories. So keeping that in mind, I try to exploit whatever edge between those two, or possibly both, that I can find and eventually find a way to win. It's not easy, especially at this level. There's a lot of very high quality players, guys that have been playing longer than me, guys that do things more traditionally. But um, I try to, try to show them a different look, maybe something they haven't seen before and, and make the matches interesting. So you make it very interesting. I'm super interested to do this lesson. We're going to be working on the serve. Uh, he wants to get a little more, what do you want to get? More power, more spin? What would you like today? I would say maybe just try to make it more of a weapon, more something that I can uh, put my opponent on the defensive uh, right off the bat and, and just create that sense of pressure throughout the match that, okay, this player is liable to hold his serve. So I'm really got to hold my own serve and maybe that builds the pressure in their own mind and they make more mistakes and just something I can really rely on because I I hate to double fault and in fact I really do but part of the reason for that is I don't I don't go for the serve as much as I could and maybe that's why they give you two serves you should probably go for one at least each time out there so a serve where I can really go for it and, and look for some easy points that way uh, might lead to greater success in the matches that I play. All right, well, let's let's get to it. Thanks so much for your interview there. That was a lot of fun. Now we'll get into the instruction. Great. Have you served some balls just the way you would in a match? Let's take a look at some of those. And over here? Yeah, you can serve right on the deuce court. Okay. And uh, I'll feed you the balls and... All right. Okay. So, wait, hey, guys, this is, this is with no warm-up, too, so... He's just coming in cold. He's a brave guy. Okay. Amazing. There we go. One more. One more. All right. Just for fun. 
Okay, awesome. Okay, so I love that this is your serve because it's going to help so many people out there. Okay. And you may get this today, you may not, but it's something that you'll at least know the answer to and, and you can start to work on. I think I'm going to give you some, some good uh, tools to, to, to go home with, okay? Sounds good. So what's the number one, I know you want more power, you want it to be more of a weapon. What's the number one technical thing you know you do wrong that's preventing you from doing that? Do you know? Uh. Well, I would say wrong is subjective, but that limits the power, probably the height of the toss and, and knee bend. A lot of times I don't bend my legs that much or the, the efforts aren't coordinated with one another. Okay, okay. So I may bend my knees, but it's not in conjunction with the height of the toss. The things aren't intersecting the way they could be to reach the maximum potential of the serve. Okay, this is this interesting. So he's saying it's it's the toss, it's the not coordinating the, the legs and the body. And here's the thing about the serve, guys. Uh, somebody actually asked me this the other day. In fact, I'm just gonna take this off because I'm gonna face away from you a little bit here and talk just so I feel more comfortable. Hopefully you guys are hearing me okay out there. Uh, but Ben, when he's going to serve, the kinetic chain is a real thing. Power comes from the ground up. That's all true. Uh, but somebody asked me, you know, what's more important, you know, the kinetic chain and using the legs, is it, is it more the lower body or is the upper body where power comes from? And the kinetic chain, which is going from the ground up, supports the upper body, okay? Without a throwing, a throwing motion, you're not going to have a big serve. Mm -hmm. So I would not, for you, I wouldn't even worry about the lower body right now. Okay. It's 100% throwing mechanics, mm -hmm. okay? Just, th just think about a baseball pitcher. If they did everything right down here to, to load up, but they had you know, no, no mechanics in their arm, they would not be a major league baseball. They've got a million dollar arm. That's why they're in the, that's why they're in the major leagues. Yeah. And so what you do when you go to serve, and this is why I'm so excited that you're here today, is that I would say this is a problem that 85% of, of recreational players have, okay? And that is that you come and right away your hand starts to go back this way. Okay. And once it comes this way, it's all over for you, okay? No matter what you do, no matter how, wh whatever legs you at, you're just only going to be able to do so much with that. Okay, and it's and it is kind of a push. Like when I'm watching you play your matches, you basically get it up here and you kind of push it in play, get the point started. Which I will tell you, I had a lesson with Justin yesterday. He said it's actually a tough serve to return because it's coming in a different way and everything like that. So I wouldn't feel too self conscious about it. But if you do want more power, we're just talking about power and not necessarily winning or losing matches. What you need to learn how to do is come right in here. So you see, if we're right here, right, one thing you can do is just kind of push your elbow to the in inside. See that? Look at that. See? And, and the wrist, boom. Put the wrist, your wrist is back there, push it forward. There you go, right there. See, so we want to get in the striking position. Let me see if, if you can do that from the back. Yep, striking position, good. And I'm going to put my mask on and actually fix it a little more for you just so you can feel the exact uh, move that you want. Okay. If you're cool with that, are you comfortable yeah, with that? Should be okay. Okay. So we want to be right there. You feel that? Uh-huh. And a little more bend in the arm. There you go. Right here. Now we're in a striking position. This is what's missing. Okay. Okay. And then from there, if I had you serve, I bet you'd probably, just out of muscle memory, your first move, you'd probably go back there. Yeah. Okay. And then it'd be over. Okay. But we need to be in the striking position. Mm -hmm. And then we need to learn how to get comfortable coming right over the head like that. Okay. Okay. Boom. That's right. All right. So that's the first thing we need to do. Now, actually the way we're going to do this, mm -hmm. let me have the racket, sure. is we're going to learn how to th throw a ball. And if you throw a ball well, then we're in business. If you don't throw a ball well, I'm going to teach you how to throw a ball well today. So throw a ball, you don't have to throw it hard, okay. but just throw it, you know, just kind of do something like that or however you throw and, and I'll look at it and we'll go from there. Okay, actually that's awesome. Okay, come on now. Oh. <laughs> Mep the Meep has got a golden arm. 
We're, this is great. Okay, do that again. That was amazing. We could do. Okay, cool. Two in a row over the fence. Come on now. That's what we like. Okay, so let's take a let's think about a couple of things that you did there that you actually don't do on your serve. Okay. Okay. The elbow is much lower. Now, a lot of people I, I like the elbow a little below the shoulder, but it's not necessarily because you're drooping the elbow, okay? okay. You don't want a, a low elbow as far as like the, it coming into the body. We want it away from the body. Mm -hmm. But what makes it appear to be low is the tilt. And, and when you're throwing over the fence, you got yourself in a big tilt. You don't get that when you serve. Okay. See, when you serve, <laughs> guys, you'll see me take on and off the mask today. This COVID coaching is a real challenge, but when you serve, you're basically right here. Mm -hmm. your, your arm isn't really like springed up like that. It's like right here, you're kind of done. And then you're pushing that serve ahead, yeah. okay? When you threw, you got way down here. The elbow is here. We actually were doing the right things with our throwing mechanics, which is super exciting. You're, I like to call this the Cobra move. You see how my wrist is here as opposed to here? Yeah. And just think about, do you watch football? Do you watch any sports? Yeah, I watch a lot of football, and that's probably the biggest uh, sport that I watch. Okay, and I don't know what you guys are picking up as far as, I think you guys are picking up my mic, his voice, but he says he watches a lot of football. Now, watch this. If you're watching, you like college or, or pro sports? Buffalo Bills. Buffalo, that's right, Buffalo Bills, I saw one. Okay, they're actually doing great. What's the record right now? Seven and three. Seven and three, so they started hot, they're getting a little, but the seven and three, right. seven yeah. three is still pretty darn good. Yeah. Okay. Now, so imagine the Buffalo Bill quarterback getting ready, last play of the game, and they start like this. What are you? Are you excited? Or are you getting nervous? I don't they, like our prospects. Yeah, right. So think about that. You see, if, if if the quarterback's getting ready and they're they're looking like this, getting ready to throw, you're like, what? Where did we get this clown from? Right? Yeah. Okay. Now. If it's the last play of the game and they drop back and you see the quarterback getting like this, are you at least getting excited like maybe he's going to throw this long bomb? Uh, I like the odds a lot better. Yeah, so look at the difference in my angle here. Okay. Do you see that? And that's how you threw the ball. Much, much better. See? So look at how this comes. This is where you really want to be working on this over the next couple of months. Okay. Getting this position mm -hmm. as opposed to this position. All right. Okay? Because one thing that's exciting is you throw completely different than you serve, <laughs> but if we can match those two yeah no you've got a huge upside okay a lot of people I work with their throw looks just like their serve and then we've got more work to do you've got a good throwing mechanic okay. which was exciting I didn't know that was gonna happen so now I'm <laughs> super excited so here and then throw and now you can see we're throwing that ball yeah so what I want you to do is I'm going to put uh, well, we'll put the basket right here so you don't have to bend over. Okay. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. So I'm going to leave this basket here with you. Right. You're going to go like this. Rack it on top of the basket. Call this a 3x drill. I like to do a lot of 3x drills. Okay. So you're going to go two. And you don't have to throw it over the fence. Um, actually, watch out there so we can get the camera. Yeah, right. There we go. Okay. okay. So the first two, you're going to go throw, throw. Now, get the racket. Hold it in a throwing position like you're a quarterback. Okay. I actually want you to hold it. I don't want you to do any separation here. Okay. Hold it. Get yourself in a little bit of a tilt. So we're not thinking about the serve going in or anything. In fact, I'd like to see you even throw, serve it towards the fence, okay? Yeah. Try and match the three. Down here, up, and throw, okay? Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Let's see how you do. Okay. So throw, good, love that position. Excellent. I'll stop doing that. <laughs> you can't. Oh. He's got a bionic arm. Good throw. Good. Now for the last. Actually, can we do those two again? Sure. The throwing mechanics are really, really good. Okay, but I actually want for us to be able to sell posters 
with Ben. I want Ben to be able to have his own football poster. And so probably getting set like this, even though it's technically fine, is pro this looks more like a quarterback from like the 1950s, right? Have you ever seen that? Those, they got like the leather helmet on yeah. and everything. They're kind of always set up like this, yeah. right? I want you looking like uh, Tom Brady or who's your quarterback? You like your Josh quarterback? Josh Allen, Tom jo Brady. We want, who, Tom Brady, who? Who's the, he's a loser. We want Josh Allen. So Josh Allen, probably for his poster, he's in a quarterback position. He's getting ready to throw a long bomb. He's probably like this. Does that look familiar to you as a, a fan of sports where they get yeah. set and they're holding on that football? Yeah. So I want you like you're holding on to the football. I want you holding it and imagining that they're going down the field and you got to throw the long bomb and then you're just going to go from out of there. Okay? So hold on to that football until it's time to release it for your two. So let's do that again because this is going to help our serve, believe it or not. Okay, so holding on to the football, releasing, good. Right, hold on to the football, perfect. Amazing, he can't help but throw it over, now serve one. All right. Hold, hold on to the football, almost. See, then he went right back in the serving motion. Okay, right. that's the trick. So, one thing too, just one little tip, and this is gonna help our service, it's super important. When you're throwing though, you do get set like this. You're here, you got a great throwing motion, but notice how the wrist is kind of like up and even, okay? That's how you're holding the ball and getting ready to throw. I want you to just, I want you to push that elbow a little more that way. Okay. And also just curl in, be a little more loose, because we want to snap this out. Okay. We want to snap this out. So we're gonna be here, here, right here, snap. All right. Okay? So let's see if we can do that on these three. Okay. So do another three. Let's take a look at how we do. So holding on to the ball. There you go. That looks awesome. I already want to buy your poster. Looks much better. Go. Guys, can you see the difference in just that one little move, how all of a sudden, it, it, this looks more professional. Hold it in there, good. Hold it down. No, that time you changed it. I didn't want to go over the fence again. Well, it doesn't matter if you go in the fence, I don't care, but but okay. um, go this, bring right. bring the wrists. I'm not looking at how far it goes, I just want to see the mechanics though. Yeah. Wrist forward, there you go, good. That looks strong. Okay. okay, now when you put the racket in your hand yeah. and the ball, make sure you got this elbow back. Jeff Saldenstein, our buddy Jeff Saldenstein, he likes to talk about elbowing the enemy. So you got a little bit of that elbowing the enemy idea. So you got a little bit of stretch back there. And then the racket forward, throw the ball up and pop the serve. Okay? Right. Yes, dude, that looks awesome. Go ahead. Better. Okay. Better. No Good job. Do it again. Right. Elbow forward. Good. Not bad. Do that again. Get set. Okay. And pause there for a second. Let me get my mask on. Get set. In the throwing position. Up a little more. Okay. Good. Don't have to be right there. Okay. And bring that a little more forward right there. All right. Good. Go ahead. Yes. That was better. Right. Do that again. Okay. Let me get the bracket out of the way. Let's do that again. Get set. Good. All right. That's step one. Step two is going to look ugly, okay? And then we're going to bridge them together and hopefully we'll look uh, pretty cool by the end. So he's going to need to do this drill a lot. How'd, how'd that feel so far? It felt awkward, to be honest with you. Yeah. I'm just not used to being yeah. in that position. And so he said it felt awkward, and that's fine, because you're doing something new, okay? So it's very, very rare that when, in the beginning, things feel natural. In fact, we had Justin out here yesterday working on tops, and by the end, he felt great, and by the end, he was flowing, but in the beginning, he felt super awkward. So that's very normal for everybody out there watching. You need to get comfortable. Here's a golden tip in life. You need to get comfortable with being uncomfortable if you want to get better, okay? So he's willing to do that today. All right, now, so this is looking better. He could work on this even getting smoother. All right, now the next thing is eventually you have to teach him how to get this back here. Another cool tip, we actually did tennis con, this guy uh, from Two Minute Tennis. He had people put a birthday hat on, we're not gonna make you do that today, <laughs> and actually knock it off to get this move and then go. Okay. But what I like to do is to just get people in, this, in the, the end. One of the worst tennis tips of all time 
is scratch your back if you take it literally, okay? Have you heard of that before, scratch your back on the serve? I have heard of that, Okay. Yes. Everybody's probably heard that. How's it going? Scratch your back. Now this is actually a bad tip if this is what you actually do for your motion where you, you come here. A lot of people actually do this. They take it too literally. They come here, they like stop the racket back here and they go up and they serve. But what's good about it for us today is your body is not used to getting in this position. Your body's used to being here at this point. And this is, and even as we're doing the throwing motion, you're still opening your racket. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something I call the dangle move. The way we do this is we have our racket up in the beginning so we can feel it, and then we just let the racket fall. That's right. And want it a little more into the bed like that. See that? That's the dangle move. Have your elbow relax a little more down. So there you go. Good. Now, what you want to do is you want to be here and you're just going to let it fall and see if you can be so relaxed that the racket actually swings a little. See if it can hinge a little bit. Notice how I'm doing this in my, with my fingers. I'm literally just like letting go and letting it come and you see I'm getting this little dangle move. Good. It's not moving as much when it ends though. Good, almost. So what we want to be able to do is give it a little momentum and flick to where we can see the racket almost moving a little bit. Do you see what I'm talking about? See how it's like kind of, it's not just stopping still. Good. Now you got it moving. Good. You feel that relaxation? Yeah. That's good. Now, here, give your body a little more tilt, okay? I mean, I'm sorry, a little more angle. So now we're, we got our legs and everything facing that way and now do that. Good. Do that again. Good. Up again. Now see if you can relax from there. Do you guys see how it's more fresh? Just let it fall and relax. Open up the hand. There you go. Right there. Good. That's it. Now, as you do that, as you're here, now you're going to add a little more of your arm, right? So we're going to let it we're going to let the elbow kind of, do you see how the elbow is kind of going to go up a little bit, up and down? Yeah, do that again. Good. A little more relaxation, that's right. Go again. Good. A little more in that position. Okay. Right there. Good. Go again. Good. Now, what I want you to do, here's where the move comes in. What I want you to do is when you feel it about to bottom out, when it's about to fall, yeah. I want you to swivel your hips around a little bit. See this? You see what I'm doing there? Mm -hmm. See if you can do that. And then, almost. And <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> It's all right. That's where the lack of coordination comes in. So it's here, <laughs> then down here. Okay. And as you start to feel it come down, yeah. you're going to push your hips. That's right. Okay. Yep. There you go. And so what we want to do is here, down, and push. Look at this. It's, it's this idea of when you're getting ready to throw. See, as, as I am doing this, I'm letting the racket fall. You see that? I'm pushing the hip, but letting the racket fall, and then the momentum just keeps going. Okay. So as you're up, start to do this simultaneously. Start to drop and push the hip. Drop and push the hip. Drop, push the hip, and see if you can just get comfortable with that. Yeah, dude, that's already looking better. Almost, but, but start up here, okay. and then drop and push the hip. Yep. That, that, was, that was your first time you did that, good. But always start up high. Okay. It's important to start up high with the racket tilted forward. If you ever like, I think I'm losing my position, you can hold the racket up here and make sure you have this angle. So now you're set, and then what you can do, whoops, got a serious car over there. What you can do is kind of like push your racket over your head and then flip, see that? So you can get that motion going. Okay. Almost, but you're going, 
you're going back here. Mm -hmm. I want you to flip it over your head. Okay. Flip it over your head and down. Flip it over your head and then push the hip. Right. Almost good. Let's get that again. Watch this. Hold on the racket. Okay. It moves this way. All right. Yes, dude, that's it. Really, I want you to go right over the hat. Okay. Right over the hat. All right. Right over the hat. I know it feels super weird, right? Yeah. Yep, that's it. Right over, yeah, dude. <laughs> okay. You're, you don't believe it, but you're actually looking better. As a, uh, it looks better. Okay, so now, now, you'll, now, now what's going to happen is he's going to look much better as a player and he's not going to win another match the rest of the year. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll revert to what worked. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. No, what you're doing is great. And um, so now, let's see if we can put this together. You're here, okay. drop, and then push the hips. Here, drop, push the hips. All right. Try that. So with an actual serve? Nope. No. We're not, we're not ready to hit a serve. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Good. Almost. Hold on. Get, get there again. Okay. See, he keeps doing something a little off with his hand, his forearm. We need to get it more in that power position. That looks good. A little more cock in there. Yep. Now, go back. Good. Good. And. So what's missing, and, and believe me, here's the tough thing about taking a lesson, especially we're taking a lesson on video, guys, is, and I can tell you, when I took lessons, last time I took like lessons for myself were guitar lessons, and it's a lot of thinking, and that's when things start to freeze up, okay? Uh, but, so whether you get it here today or you go home, um, you'll get it at some point as long as you keep working at it. And lots of times you just kind of need to be by yourself and let everything sink in. And what, what was he doing? What was he saying? And, and it might take you a couple days to feel it, okay? So here, what's missing is this falling. What we need to get to before we, before we can hit a serve, and this is why so many people want to hit serves. They want to hit baskets. They think that's how you get better. There's no point in a serving until we can get this idea of coming back over the head and getting this flow. Just like you're able to do in your uh, throwing motion, we need to get this in our serve. So until we can get this move, we can't really go to the serve. Okay. Go ahead, let's see if we can try it. All right. Yep. Good. Right over the head. Not bad. So you're still coming back like this. Yeah. So you're going like this. I'm going like this. Okay. That's the big difference. And also you tend to keep bringing your wrist this way. Right. We need to keep learning to, again, get in this like cobra strike position. If you watch Andy Roddick serve, you watch all the great servers, they're here. Once it starts to get this way, it gets really tough not to drop back and hit your serve like that. That looks awesome right there. Okay. That's it. And now right over the head. There you go. Good. Good, that's it. Good. Good, now you're getting there. Okay, good. Now what we're gonna do, that was a little better. Okay. Now what we gotta do is we got to make it in a, a flowing t type thing. And uh, a great tool that you might actually want to get is a serve sock, or Lisa Dotson's got the total serve. Have you ever seen those tools? Uh, I've seen something, it's a variation. Yeah, it's basically like, real simple guys, it's basically like a, a, a sock with tennis balls, or Lisa's, it's rubberized, so it's better weighted. I actually like hers the best. Okay. Lisa, I like yours the best, okay? So, what you can do now is we can, turn this into where we want to make this a continuous thing. So I want you to do, is see if you can do this. You start it here, you throw it over the head, you pop the hips, you swing here, you flow back here, you come back up. I would, I would, I would guide the opposite hand, I'd use that. 
I'd learn to flick it over my head. Look at that, I'm just super la relaxed. I'm relaxing the hands mm -hmm. in my fingertips. Just the momentum going. Once I, feel, once I feel it drop, I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna come down here. Look how big I'm going here. I like to call this the ice cream scoop finish. Right now, you're holding on the racket too tight and stopping like that, okay. and then you're kind of done. We need everything to just like start working with, with each other. So it's here, back, throw, around, over our head. And you see how I got this continuous motion going? Let's see if we can get a little bit of that. Okay. You can always ask me questions too if I'm, I know I'm right. talking a lot. <laughs> Good, there you go. And see if we can make it continuous from there. Okay. Weave out of there. Good, and down and then weave it back. Say, look, if you can, can you do this? Watch this, like you're weaving, watch this. Coming here, and then look at how I just keep it flowing. Okay, okay. See that? So finishing here, right. keep it flowing. Okay. Good, and then keep it flowing, not bad. That was better, good. Racket face is, is opening. Okay. We want to make sure that thumbnail is looking at you when you come back here. That was awesome. That was much better. Good. And now as you start to swing, you're going to come back here and swing more out this way instead of this way. And, okay. and now we've almost got it. Yep, that was great. Again, good. Falling over that way too much. Okay. So we want to come here, out, and around here. Okay. Try not to fall too much this way. Okay. Good, there you go. Good, and one more. Excellent. Okay, so now we're getting a little bit of flow and we're gonna go up to the service box to make life a little easier on ourselves and to stop thinking about the box and hitting serves in, okay? So now what we're gonna do here to, to finish up today is we're gonna start here. Again, we want the racket tip up. Now, here's another thing, guys. People ask, is it better to kind of serve like Andy Roddick, who is kind of the position we're in, where he just basically came right here, right over his head and down. That's what Roddick did. And then you got someone more like a Pete Sampras who had more of the traditional swing past the shoelaces and up. What's better? Uh, both those people have some of the best serves of all time, so either is fine, obviously. It's a personal preference. But I do like to help people in the beginning, especially learn the new serve. I like them to start here, even if it feels awkward, even if it feels limiting. I like you to start here to limit the, the range of motion so less can go wrong. And you're coming here, and again, focus on coming right over the head, okay? And something I want you to focus on when you go home today, and maybe we'll hook up in a couple of weeks, is a drill you can do at home is to track your thumbnail, okay? Because right now what's happening, if we were to analyze what your thumbnail does, it starts to move away from you. Do you see that? And then you go and you hit your serve, okay? The pros, when they go, they can, as you're doing this, the thumbnail keeps staying to the inside. It stays to the inside. Even as I'm coming around here, I can still see it until I start to go out and pronate. So the thumbnail is in my line of sight. If, I'm, if I were to watch the thumbnail instead of the ball, for quite a while to where, for uh, more recreational players who haven't had a lot of private instruction on their serve, most of them, their thumbnail goes away. Their thumbnail goes away and then they go and they hit the serve, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna do one serve where you're tracking your thumbnail, you're looking at that, you're going and you're hitting, like, okay, I understand that. And the next time you go, you're gonna come here and throw up the ball and see if you can hit the serve. Okay? Go ahead. Good, good, all right. There's the ball. Better, notice how we had more spin on that actually. It's interesting. It's okay. Get yourself deeper into the tilt. Okay. Coming back.
good. Excellent. See if you can do that same thing, okay. but relax a little more around this way. But I'm, I'm seeing more power. I like what I'm seeing. It's get, getting better. Good. You see how that extra little thing at the end helped you? I did, yeah. Keep doing that. Good. Okay, Ben, so first of all, I want to, I want to sincerely thank you for, for coming out. And I want to thank you for all you do for, for tennis players out there with, with being on the Tennis Troll channel and playing matches. Um, let me know what you felt about your serve today. Uh, it was very different, very different. Um, what I had done with my serve up to now was just what kind of came naturally, as you know. And as I think people could tell, I'm self-taught. So I didn't really have anybody telling me what the mechanics of a good serve could look like and I uh, thank you for doing that. Um, it's given me a lot to think about. I'm not looking at it as something binary where I have to completely overhaul my serve in order to get better. I'm looking at it as a potential additional resource in my game, something I can work on on the side, maybe uh, spice it from time to time when it's appropriate and long term if I'm able to work at it enough and get it to the point where uh, it's going to be my best serve then use it more regularly. Okay, that, that's, that's actually really, really good. Uh, a couple things you said there that, that were uh, interesting to me is that you said you're not necessarily making, looking to make a full overhaul on your serve. And I think one thing we improved by the end that can help you without changing any mechanics was being a little more relaxed. A lot of times when you hit, you do tend to more punch it and you kind of hold on to the finish. Mm -hmm. By the end, we can see, we'll show it on video, where you were actually relaxing coming around just there alone, without changing any mechanics, can improve your serve. And I think for everybody watching out there, of course, it's really, really fun to watch like a, a complete makeover take place in one video, uh, but that's not realistic, you know? Not for me. Not, not for Ben, is what he said. But not for 95% of the people out there. And so what Ben, and there is no, and I want everybody to understand this, there is no right or wrong answer here. It's an individual choice. Ben right now can decide to keep the serve just as he is and drive opponents crazy and win lots of matches and lose matches too. Be a tennis player, that's what we do. We win, we lose, but this dude's an incredible competitor. That's choice one. Choice two is to look for tips. You can go back and watch this video we do and he goes, okay, I'm not gonna completely change the way Pete was showing me this and that, but there were some things he said that I liked that I really wanna work on. That's choice two. And maybe he can get those going within a month, within 30 days, if he picks a couple tips that might work. Choice three is he goes, I wanna like completely do a complete makeover and, and change my serve. Um, what do you think about those three ideas? Uh, very different. I, I like the option of referencing what we talked about in the future, referring to it and trying to incorporate it over time, not uh, stressing about trying to implement everything at once and relaxing in, in another sense of the term, just like you talked about. Um, so yeah, that's, that's given me a lot to think about and I think the people that watch this will also uh, gain from it as well. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching this video. Um, and that's what you guys can decide out of your game, okay? And know that, like if Ben were to say, I want a complete overhaul on my serve, really change the mechanics, he would have to have a real talk in the mirror, make a real commitment to himself. It'd be a lot of work. And here's one thing where I'm a little different than a lot of coaches. It might not be worth it for Ben. It might be, he might decide. It's, it's up to you as the individual, as far as what you want, okay? And just know that, there's, there's no right or wrong. It's just when people come to me, it's whatever they want 
in their game right now to make them feel better, to give them a little more confidence. And that's good enough. So, Ben, I, I wish you the best of luck. Hopefully you will come out. Would you like to come out and continue some of these lessons with me? I would. That sounds great, Pete. All right. Cool. And good luck in your matches. Good luck to you guys out there. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And hopefully we'll be back with a follow-up video in a couple weeks with Ben. Take care. Hey, if you're not a tennis player and you don't want my most popular serve course absolutely free, skip this video. Did you know that the serve is the most popular search inquiry on YouTube when it comes to tennis instruction? And today I want to give you my most popular course, Serving A to Z, absolutely free. This is not a joke. Are you tired of having no power on your serve? Would you like to have a little more placement and consistency on that serve? What would it do for your tennis game if you were able to walk out to your local courts and step up to the line with complete confidence and start each point with an unfair advantage because you have the best serve in the business at your local courts. So many of my students have struggled with the serve until they found my course online. This very course I'm about to give you for free. My name is Peter Freeman and I'm a USPTA elite professional and my YouTube channel has been voted top 10 instructional channels in the world. And today I want to give you my most popular serving course, Serving A to Z, 100% free today. This course is going to help you develop the three checkpoints on the serve everybody must master if they want to have any chance of having a good serve. It's going to be able to give you more power and consistency on the serve and we're going to get into advanced concepts like developing that nasty slice and sick kick. This course is going to dramatically cut the learning curve. It's going to save you thousands of dollars in lessons and it's going to also save you countless hours of frustration trying to figure out everything on your own. So to get instant access to this free course serving a to z click on this video right now plus i'm throwing in a last second bonus just because i'm in a really good mood today seven steps to a powerful serve but you have to act fast because i'm only giving away a thousand copies it's my way of saying thanks to the tennis community for supporting my videos so click on the video act quickly and i'll see you inside the training